Oh my goodness. So you want to be a psychic and you want to bring your like amazing intuitive skills and abilities to people to share them, to maybe make a little cash. Um, and you know, to just like, you know, raise the vibration or whatever, whatever it is. Okay. If you do, right? You do not want to be a bad psychic. You do not want to be one of those people that um, scares people, scams people, um, messes with people's minds, all right? This is super important. So stay tuned because by the end of this video, you will know how to be an ethical psychic um, who gives people the best service ever, helps people to heal. You'll also know what it is that you need to know to deal with difficult clients when you start your business. And some, so just some core business skills you need to know um, if you do want to get into the psychic business. Um, super cool. So I, in, in this video, I'm doing an interview with my friend and expert, Christina Courtney. She is amazing. I'm going to introduce her soon. She's a certified psychic. And so we got, we got a little heated in the interview today. Um, I had pre-recorded it and, um, and like we, we were talking a little bit earlier and I just like hopped on to do this intro. So anyway, let me not waste your time. All right, Christina, I want to welcome you this week. Um, we are going to be talking, Christina's going to tell us all about the ethics and responsibility and things you need to know if you want to start creating a business and serving clients um, with your psychic abilities, right? We have this ability, so we want to share, we want to help people heal, we want to give them guidance and support. Um, and so before you do that, there are really some things you need to, need to consider before you start doing that. Um, and so Christina's going to talk about that. Um, she's a certified psychic. And I'm just going to go over, let you know about Christina. If you haven't um, caught our videos, we are doing a four-part series. This is the last of the four videos we're doing. So if you haven't seen the other three videos before this, check them out. Um, we went over like how you become a psychic, what are the psychic senses, how you know what's coming through, practices. And um, Christina... Um, Christina Courtney, she is an alignment coach, a psychic, intuitive artist, and speaker who helps people who are ready for transformation evolve past their own limiting beliefs and align with their authentic selves so that they can live the blissful life that they were meant to live. Christina has a very broad spiritual background, including but not limiting, limited to being trained in nearly a dozen forms of energy healing, including working and traveling for the reconnections and a Karuna Reiki master. Um, she's a certified psychic healer medium and uses uh, EFT regularly with her clients. Um, she offers workshops, retreats, one-on-one -on -one sessions locally in California, as well as internationally. Um, for more information, you can visit Christina at ChristinaBCourtney.com, and I'll leave that in the description below. Well, welcome, Christina. So Thank I'm so you. excited. Um, I, like, I love just, like... Um, share like hearing your wisdom on this and um what you have to say so today like um we're talking about ethics and responsibility so i want to get your perspective as like a certified psychic um what i i'm actually going to like what have you seen like you know as far as this work um where people are not being as ethical and not as responsible and kind of like, what are the concerns like that you've seen, you know, in this space and the work? Yeah. Um, at its core, I just think that um, when you, when you're supporting somebody spiritually, it's one of the most profound things that you can do for someone. And so I really just think that we need to take responsibility for that. And we want to have reverence for that and be in an integrity with our work. I feel like that's first and foremost, like one of the most important thing that we can do as a practitioner. And when people, so when people are coming to you, you want them to be able to trust you. You want them to be able to um, walk away feeling lifted up and supported and loved and nourished. And I just see so much in this community because it's not, I love that it's not a regulated field because that gives us the freedom 
to follow inspired guidance and do our practice the, the way that we want to do it, the way that we feel led to do it, which is beautiful. But also because it's an unregulated industry, you have all different kinds of people with all different kinds of backgrounds and levels of integrity or not integrity um, practicing. And so I think that we get a bad rap a lot as psychics because there are some people who are not respecting the work. And so when I went into this work, I was like, I am 100% not going to be one of those people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I cannot do that. And I need to be in integrity with the work that I'm doing because just like there's, you know, we have this, um, I like to compare it to car mechanics. For some reason our, in our society, we have this belief that like there's good car mechanics and then there's people that will scam you, you know? Right, right. And, yeah. And I think that psychics have kind of gotten that rap too, is that like, there's some good ones. And then there's also some ones that will scam you. And I think that if you're going into this field, that you should take that responsibility to be one of the good ones. <laughs> yeah, I so agree with you. And I noticed that too. I mean, this happens in every industry. I mean, you've gone to great doctors, you've gone to awful doctors, and even in a regulated industry, I mean, you can go to two different doctors, they have the same training and one is awful. Um, you know, I used to work as a psychotherapist and I can't tell you how many people, you know, they went to someone, they had all the degrees and everything and they were like traumatized by the person yes. they went to. I had to like talk them through to like, trust mm -hmm. me. Um, and I, I find that now. And um, so, you know, like, so one of the things that I think, you know, as, um, as healers, like if you do have this gift and you want to share it, um, you know, I think it's so important to have like great intention, like, a, a, you know, to, to only also offer the services that you feel like um, confident that you can deliver on. And I think it's also being clear with your clients exactly like what you can do for them and what you can't. Yes. as well. So how do you handle that situation? Because I know I get that too. People ask me very like specific questions on their future, right? Yeah. And um, and so the, the way your psychic intuition works, it's not like it, it, it comes through in signs and symbols. And if you've watched the previous videos, you'll have, you know, seen that. Like, it, you know, your guidance comes, doesn't come through in like, yeah, this is going to happen and this is going to happen, right? We interpret it. Yeah. And so like, how do you handle that? Like if someone's like, well, I need to know this, like, tell me, tell me this exactly. Or, you know, like, how do you navigate, um, I guess, like what you can do for a client and what you can't. Yeah. I think that full disclosure going into that relationship is really important. Um, so full disclosure, meaning that you're communicating with them, that you're, um, that you're going to get whatever messages you're going to receive and you're relaying those messages, but ultimately it's up to them to make those decisions. We never ever want to take the power away from our clients. Oftentimes clients are in a place of distress and need and they want to give you their power. They will be like, here, tell me what to do. You know, they'll hand over their power and their decision-making to the practitioner. And we need to be very, um, aware of that and to not take that from them and to instead empower them to make their own decisions. We also need to um, let them know that this is a potentiality for this moment. So whenever we're tuning into something, we're tuning in at that specific moment. And on planet Earth, we have free will. So things are going to change. Um, so they need to take that into consideration and take ownership for whatever decisions they do choose to make or not make based on that reading. Um, we also want to um, let them know that even the most accurate psychics, they've done some studies. I forget, when I was going through my certification program, one of the things that always stuck with me is they, they said that in this um, study that they did of intuitives, only the most accurate, the most accurate intuitive was only 80% accurate. So that means we, we're, we're translating. So just like if you were to translate Spanish to German, it's going to be a little bit off. You know, it's not going to be an exact translation. So mm -hmm. people need to understand that and not take every single thing that you say so literally and really listen to what you're saying and then tune in with themselves and say, oh, does that resonate for me? Does that feel right for me? And only take action on the things that really resonate and feel right for them. It should be like the person that you're going to is saying stuff and you're like, oh, I already knew that. I just needed to have. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. how it feels. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've noticed that, like, I mean, what's important to me actually in this work is not predicting some guidance for someone, but really being able to help that person feel confident in what they've been feeling because they, yeah. like, we all have this gift of knowing. And so I think that's why, like, it's cool, like, doing the, like, the work that we do, like, I, for me, it's, um, you know, as much as I, I can give guidance and stuff, I love to like just check in and, and be like, hey, is this feeling right for you? Because that actually is the important thing that that um, your client is able to start um, empowering themselves and understand like their intuitive gifts and abilities. And, um, you know, like, because like none of us are super like 100% accurate because we all are it's like we're getting this information through a filter like we have a, a brain and we're in a body you know we're not spirit right and like in spirit right um where we remember everything we're having to interpret you know yeah. kind of like being having to see a message with a blindfold on you know or finding your way with a blindfold on and um and so you know I know yeah like saying your limitations because even like people ask if i'm a medium well i do get information from spirits coming through and i find in the readings there is always like a, a message from a loved one comes up right but i don't feel like at this point like I, i've trained enough where i would be like yeah i'm a medium but i can i can definitely like give um really great intuitive guidance like through a reading you know and yeah. helping navigate so yeah. Um, so I want to also get into like, I know we talked about like what some of the core skills are that if you're working with clients, like you should have a handle on how to do these if you are working with people. So, um, so Christina, what would you say are like some of like the core skills, like someone should have those before they start like going out and working with clients and charging them? Yeah. Yeah. I love what you said too about the mediumship. Sorry, just to go back to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is to, don't be afraid to refer out. I think that we really need to know what we're capable of, what, what our gifts of how we can support people always check in with intuitive guidance of if that client, if that client is right for you or not, and don't be afraid to refer out to other people if you can't deliver what they're needing mm -hmm. um, and it's not a match. And then for what you're, what, what different things you, you need to be able to do or be in order to, to know if you're ready or not is to make sure that your stuff is not coming into the session. So um, I don't think that we're ever like 100% completely like healed. Like there's always gonna be things that are coming up for us. So I don't feel like we should wait to do this until we're like a perfect, you know, person or we're, right. we're never gonna do it. Yeah, yeah. We do, yeah, we do need to be at a point where we've done enough of our own personal healing work that for the duration of that session, we are 100% a safe container for that individual and their needs. It's not about us. It's not about what we're healing or what we're going through. It's 100% about that client and holding that safe container. So I think the ability to, to hold that safe container for them and to be 100% available and supportive for them during that period of time. Then I also think it's really important for us to make sure that we have developed our bedside manner, if you will, mm -hmm. just like doctors, you know, will go to school and like learn all of the, um, the information um, about how to do what they're doing. There's an art of working with a human being. And I think that we really need to develop that art of how do you communicate messages with love and compassion? How do you be supportive of someone in that situation? How do you, you know, hold that sacred container? I think that we really need to be conscious of making sure that we have developed that art and that those those basic fundamental ways of connecting person to person and being able to know also again what your boundaries are and what things are not appropriate to do in a session and not crossing those lines i think that that is super important yeah it's totally um i yeah like i love that the art of working with human beings you know like um there is an art to it it is developed um, and so I think like one of the things I know, like, um, we had talked about it, it was like also having a core skill of working. If you don't know how to work with people and, and, and support them, um, there, you should get some basic training on like counseling or coaching at least like, um, even if, so even if 
you're taking like a psychic development course, you want it to have some elements of um, like how to listen, like active listening, how to reflect to the client what's going on, um, how to hold the space. Like you're holding the sacred space, the spirit's coming in. So that's sacred, right? Yeah. And so holding the space, like holding their emotions and supporting them through that. And so, um, you know, so I have had a background as a psychotherapist before I did this. So I felt like, okay, I, I know if someone gets upset during the session, I know how to handle it. And <laughs> Um, you know, I know how to interpret too the, the cards as well, like from my spiritual development as well. Um, so, you know, I've studied in many different like spiritual like modalities and one of them was A Course in Miracles. And so focusing on like that, it's the loving voice that's coming through. That's like the wit, the wise part. Like if it's saying something nasty, that is not spirit coming through. That's like ourselves. Um, and so, yeah, just having some kind of like, um, counseling or coaching element to your training and if you don't have that the importance of getting that um because like you're not like i don't know Chris, christina maybe you could speak to this like you know um it's not just like you read the cards and you're like here's the message people get upset about it or they get concerns like you know if, like if i'm doing a tarot card reading right and the death card comes up how does someone handle that right you know and there is an art to doing that and talking people through that as well yeah. And I, yeah, I love that you mentioned that. I think that that's absolutely something that you should consider as you're developing and whether you go through a certification program or you're developing on your own, making sure that that's um, a, a tool, a tool in your toolbox, right? Is, mm -hmm. is how to um, handle those situations, how to deal with people that are grieving. I mean, I've had people just totally break down. And again, because you're a therapist, you have that training. And because I also used to do a lot of, um, healing events for people that were grieving. I had a lot of that training too, but then when I went through my certification program, I mean, there was a specific class that was all about how to deal with difficult people, whether somebody's asking for a refund or they're, you know, upset about something or they're grieving and they just can't stop crying. And, you know, how do you handle those difficult situations? Because the more prepared that you are going into it, um, the more at ease you're going to feel, the more at ease they're going to feel, and the less likely it is that you're going to run into one of those situations mm -hmm. and then if you do you're able to to handle it and I also love what you said about you know the course of miracles and going in with love I think that that's that's the number one thing out of everything that we've talked about in all four of these series mm -hmm. is to really just set the intention for love to be a, a voice of love in their life to show up in love and when we're doing that it's it's like we can't go wrong like that's the most important thing <laughs> yeah at the very least do no harm you need to do that yeah yeah and and that's even a found that actually is a foundation for like the art of 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 working with people um because like even in psychotherapy one of the core um conditions that i learned is from carl rogers and it was giving unconditional positive regard like unconditional love for that person in that space mm -hmm. you know so really like being in a state of non-judgment of like stuff comes up people are you know like we have all these emotions come up and really just being there for that person um, and it's so cool because that's how spirit talks like through unconditional love so i'm like carl rogers he knew where i was at um, and also i think one of the things too that came up like from my background was knowing your stuff like we all have issues we all have our own emotions coming up and really doing your own healing like first before you start and and, and like i don't want to prevent people from going into this and doing the work um, and you don't have to be completely healed. Like I'm still in, a, we're all in process of healing, but um, you have to be able to be in a state where like you could see somebody cry or have somebody get angry with you and be able to step back and say, okay, this, this is their emotions, um, like, and, and come from a place of understanding and, um, and have a handle on your emotions so that you're not like, oh my God, you know, like, why are you angry? You know, like start arguing or like um, being totally overwhelmed yourself. And, and even with that, I have to say like my experience working with clients, like there, there is an element of you learn, like you have a course on it. And yeah. then there's also an element of you have to just start working with people. 
yeah. to know how to do it. Like there's just, <laughs> you don't know how to handle like a client getting completely angry with you or crying or whatever until you're actually in that situation. Yeah. Um, and I think that even goes to mentorship. So like having a mentor, someone you admire who does this work, who can give you guidance. Yeah. Um, like when I was, when I was a psychotherapist, we had supervision, so regular supervision. And so you may not have that, but you may have someone that you really admire, a teacher and that you can talk to. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's really important. That goes into something else that I wanted to mention, which is confidentiality. So oh, yeah. know, we're not bound legally by confidentiality, but I think that we are ethically. Yeah. And so ethically, we do need to make sure that what happens in a session is confidential and that we protect that person's privacy and we should have a release form and all of those other things as well. Um, mm -hmm. But we, we may need to, um, to debrief something, you know, just like clinicians, if you're a therapist, you know, you have a really tough session, something may have gotten triggered in you and afterwards you need to process it. And so that, that can also happen as an intuitive where you need to discuss something with someone. And that's, it's so important that we have that resource. So making sure that you have a mentor, maybe a teacher that, that helped you or a colleague that provides that safe, sacred, um, professional, confidential in, um, container where it is safe for you to debrief things. You can't just debrief them with like a, a normal girlfriend or, you know, right. you, 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 you need to protect that information um, and be in integrity. And you, you probably could speak more to that as a therapist, how you would recommend going about that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's no regulation for confidentiality. And like to a point, I mean, I agree with you. I, do, I like that it's not regulated because with spirit, like you'll be guided to do different things and so I, if I am like, okay, I'm ready to start offering this, or I want to do my service in a different way, it's nice to have that freedom, but it, yeah. there is responsibility. Like it doesn't, it doesn't let us off the hook. Like we have people's lives in our hands. And so I would say like, you know, like you talked about people give you their power, right? And so yeah. first of all, I think it's important to give people back their power yes. and be like, I'm just like you, I'm just sharing my gifts. Okay. Like this is, you know, like for a higher purpose. Um, and, and like in the confidentiality piece, like, you th like someone's telling you something really important in, in your session. And mm -hmm. so how would think about just the common courtesy of how would you feel if that person took what you said and shared it everywhere. Or if you're on an online space, like posted it on their website without your permission. Or um, like, what if I like made a video about someone I did a reading for and I went into detail like and said their name or something. Um, you know, it's, it's like, think about how you would feel. Now, with that being said, with confidentiality, you may speak in general terms of like, this is what I've experienced with clients or I've had a situation, but you never want to give identifying information. You never want to give out any information where someone could go, I know exactly who this is, where they live, what their name is. Um, like you don't want anybody to be able to identify the person. And so if you're sharing about, you know, the work that you do, um, you, you just want to keep in mind, like, would you want someone saying this about you like if you if you were you know had a reading done or something yeah absolutely yeah yeah and then i think there's um another component of it too going with that that like ethics again is like the business aspect of it is that if you do decide like okay i have all the training i feel ready to do this i feel called to do this i'm able to show up in this way and i want to share this gift i'm like that's awesome. Congratulations. Like I so support that. Um, but then we want to start looking into the business aspect, right? Like mm -hmm. making sure that you have a waiver, you know, having a release. That's just, it's just so common nowadays. You, you want to do something like that. It doesn't have to be something extravagant, but, um, and I'm not an attorney. I have full disclosure. You need to check with your um, legal professionals, your tax professionals, but making sure that you've actually set up a business and that you're paying taxes, that you have a release, that you have insurance, that you, that you've, 
set yourself up for success in it so that you can feel peaceful about what you're doing too. And it's so beautiful in, in this modern day. There's, um, there's so many reasonable, affordable ways to be able to do those things and so many resources. So I just encourage people to, to look into those resources and make sure that, that they feel at peace with however they're structuring their business um, if they do, do decide to turn it into a business. And that's not to deter or scare anyone from this, but it is such an important part. And I really appreciated that the certification program that I went through had a whole segment on how to run a business because in order for you to share your gifts, you need to be able to make a living from it in order to sustain it. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to do it and you're gonna to have to go back to doing something else instead of sharing your gifts. So I think investing that time and how to, to support yourself in that um, is just so incredibly valuable. I think it is too. It's like, um, and you have to look into the reasons for why you're doing it. I think most people who go into like um, sharing their gifts have good intentions and then there's people who don't. So yeah. you know for yourself if, if what your intention is and your gifts should be used to heal, to lift people up, to empower. If it really is anything other than that, you have no business doing this. Agreed, yeah. And we do need to make a living, but if money is your objective for doing it too, I would say that that's not the right reason for, for doing this. Of course, money um, supports you and you should feel free to charge money and make an abundant living. But if that's the reason that you're going into it, um, I would, I would reconsider that as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. So I love this conversation. I feel like we get so fired up about this. <laughs> I, know, you see a lot of bad things. I was just talking to someone about what I did and um, she's not a client of mine, but she had like someone tell her, like, um, like predict that she was going to die at a young age. She didn't, yeah. by the way, it didn't come true because you can't predict that kind of stuff. But people yeah. have some trauma around this too, mm -hmm. um, you know, and like, that's not okay. And yeah. so we have to be a better example of like what this um, healing modality is for people. Yeah. And yeah. Um, and I mean, I just love like, you know, like love what I see. And so like, if you are getting, you know, like a reading done or coaching or any type of healing, it's also important to I think develop a relationship. I mean, that's one reason why like I started, you know, like YouTube and being here and sharing the information. I feel like I want to give readings to people who have a relationship and have trust in like what I'm doing versus like I'm some random person on the internet, you know, <laughs> that they can get a reading from. Um, but, you know, developing a relationship, like having, you know, even getting a referral from somebody like as a client, you know, like it's, you know, it's a relationship. So yeah. I feel like I went on a tangent, but. <laughs> I love that. Actually, I love that you said about that um, person that you met that had that reading and it stuck with them. And that's, like that is why this is so important. That right. is why you need to take this seriously because people will take will take what you say and will hold on to it. So we need to be careful about what we say. We want to deliver the messages we're getting, but we want to make sure that we've gotten to that point where if we're getting a message like, oh, your husband's cheating on you or somebody's going to die, that we double check that information. We make sure that it's 100% accurate it, and then making sure that we're actually supposed to communicate it. Because also a thing that I've noticed with spirit is that sometimes spirit will show me a whole, like a family unit or system or all the things that are going on, but they're showing me all of that so that I can kind of narrow into a different perspective or information. I'm not actually supposed to share all that stuff with them. And if I am seeing it, maybe I'm being guided to say like, there's a potentiality for this, or is there's a possibility or like learning the art of how we phrase those words and especially those, those difficult things. Um, Cause they can, they can leave an impression on someone, like you said, and we need to make sure that we're, um, we're really taking responsibility for our words and our actions in a session and making sure that it's all 100% intuitively guided. Yeah, absolutely. And I even like what came to me now is even talking about, even if someone's skeptical, like even if someone is difficult, you have a responsibility to get still giving them the best reading because I have given readings to people who were skeptical 
And then they did hold on to what I said. Like it, it changed yeah. them. And so, cause I think like the other thing is if people are difficult, sometimes you get frustrated and be like, whatever. But um, like, you just never know how they're like, what they're going to walk away, you know, um, thinking like, so even, even the whole thing of someone's difficult and skeptical, still treating with that person with like respect and reverence and just honoring that that's where they're at. And they're skeptical for a reason, you know, they have maybe have had people like, um, who betrayed them or had bad experiences in the past. And so still like, first of all, you want to respect your own boundaries of you know, like, you know, hey, if they're super, you know, it depends on their behavior, like if someone's being abusive, or, you know, like, that's, that's one thing. And, and even like, so there are even moments where you step away and go, hey, like, maybe this isn't a good fit. But if someone's just skeptical, right, and they're giving you some like, feedback, still like honoring them and giving them the best reading possible. Um, and holding them in a space of love, knowing like we're all human and this is hard and and that's why they're in this space. Because I have seen people who were like just super skeptical and then by the end of the reading, they were like, they're like, what did that say again? Like they, they, they do take the information. So you have a responsibility in how you, what you relay. Absolutely. I love that. This is such yeah. an awesome conversation. I wish yeah. that like when you go on the internet and you look for psychic development or whatever, like there's, it's so heavy on like the intuitive side of it. And I really like, I'm, I'm so grateful that you started this conversation for us to talk about the ethics and the art of being a healer and supporting in this way, because it is so, so important. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. I just love that we connected on this topic as well. And, and it was like, this was a topic where we like, we are going to do a whole video on it because it's that important. And yeah. Um, this is like a super important thing to consider before you start working with people. Um, thanks so much. And um, so, so this, so Christina, um, I just, before we end, I just want to, well, first, okay. First, uh, if you have a question on like, how do you deal with a difficult situation? Maybe you're starting to do this work and you're finding things or, you know, you have questions about how to do this practice ethically. Um, or how to deal with certain situations, leave a comment below and we'll answer them. And yeah. then if you want to work with Christina, how would uh, clients work with you? Yeah, um, so Valentine's going to leave my information down below. So please feel free to reach out. I do workshops, um, classes. I also work with people one-on-one -on -one developing their intuitive gifts. Um, a lot of coaching on personal life path and how to step into your power, releasing um, anything that's holding you back. So I have a lot of things to offer. And if you have any interest in working with me, please feel free to reach out. And I would love to do a complimentary um, consult with you to see if it might be a good match. So yeah. That would be great. Christina is an amazing coach and healer and she's like, um, and she's very ethical too. She takes the, you know, like, I mean, she is just like such a safe person to share your stuff with too. Um, so I'll leave a link to her. She has a great opt-in who on discernment. Um, so I'll leave that below and you can also connect with her on her website. I'll leave that as well. Thank you so much for being here, Christina. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Valentine. This is so much fun. Yes.